podcast. But what if I told you that was the only doll you were allowed to play with the rest of your life? Yes, but do you make a commitment to a doll? Do you walk down the aisle and sign legal papers to be with that doll forever? Just saying maybe you shouldn't get married if you feel this way. Also explaining your divorce to your kids outside during a lightning storm. Monogamy isn't realistic. Monogamy isn't realistic. Movie tries to explain Amy's future dating philosophy by having she and her sister repeat this mantra at a very young age. Never mind that monogamy is a word and concept they don't understand, which was preceded by a story about playing with dolls that they didn't fully comprehend. Let's just forward through 23 years of complex psychology and get to the one night stands already. That looks like a whole cast of Game of Thrones. What the f*** does that even mean? Besides, wouldn't that suggest that his penis gets progressively smaller as the evening progresses? <laughs> Wait, is the movie about how Amy doesn't want to commit to relationships or is it about her being a serial killer? Hey guys, I'm Amy. Don't judge me, fuckers. I'm just a sexual girl, okay? Could have fooled me. You had a guy pleasure you for five seconds and then you faked falling asleep so you wouldn't have to go any further. Is that how we're going to define the term four minutes into the movie? The Village East Theater throws the gauntlet down to moviegoers and says, we will program four modern day movies you have never heard of, a fake movie starring Daniel Radcliffe, and a movie from 1987, and we will dare you to find a reason to visit our theater. He's great, but it is like f***ing an ice sculpture. What the f*** does that even mean? Does that mean your private parts go numb and you ruin someone's art while doing it? Okay. Okay, so I broke the sleepover rule. In a matter of seconds, we see her leaving and nothing absolutely at all happens because she broke the rule. Oh, you're in Staten Island, sugar. <laughs> Conveniently, this guy lives in a place where you can just look out the window and see how far you are from Manhattan so you can punctuate your bad choices. Is this the movie's title or is it a comment on New York City? Which version of Johnny Depp would you most want to have sex with? For I can't me, stop thinking about it's it. It's Pirates of the Caribbean. Choosing Captain Jack Sparrow when Ichabod Crane was right there. I'm picking like an Edward Scissorhands Johnny Depp. You would get totally cut up. Like yeah, but he'd feel so bad about it that he'd be like, I'll never leave you. I thought that you wanted men to leave. And why would his promise of never leaving you make up for your body getting sliced up? Look, this is ours. This is ours. Right, we made this. Movie takes credit for creating Ezra Miller. I am pitching Dr. Aaron Connors. Uh, he works with some of the Knicks. Bryson pitches something so unlike the inappropriate stories they pitched earlier that it feels inappropriate for the inappropriateness. I just think that sports are stupid and anyone who likes them is just like a lesser person. Funny, I think most sports fans would say the same thing about anyone claiming to like an Amy Schumer film. Nikki, I want you to research whether garlic makes salmon taste any different. How am I supposed to? Thank you. Fucking gross. Especially my dad's house like isn't selling and my sister and I just had to put him in this assisted living place. Of course, we find out a few seconds later that Diana is not interested in this story. Actually, we knew Diana wasn't interested in this as soon as she was introduced in the movie. But Amy, who works with her every day, seems to think Diana will be. I guess this is a new and expanded definition of dramatic irony. When you know things that characters in the movie have known for years and yet still do things that suggest they don't. Don't talk to me for two weeks. Two weeks is not nearly a long enough time for Ezra Miller to not talk to you. That's my sister, Kim. She's cute, right? Well, back off. She's totally married as I was just about to ask her out until you said that. Probably just as well, though. This theater has a strict policy about not flirting with movie characters during showtime. Sometimes there could be, you know, multiple universes, but people don't know how to describe that yet, but it's a new theory, and I'm so excited to see if they figure it out or not. Don't worry, kid. They will figure it out. And then every comic book movie for the next decade will be about the multiverse, and we'll all hate it. And people will really hate your mom for some reason, too. Why is he dressed like Colonel Sanders? The f*** does that even mean? Colonel Sanders wears a white suit with a black bow tie and sometimes a red apron with white stripes on it. The f*** does this outfit have to do with Colonel f***ing Sanders? Is this co It is, and you'd think something amusing might happen when Amy does it, but you'd be wrong. Mom was so f***able then. Saying things. Why does Amy date Steven on the regular when she clearly doesn't want to commit to him? I'd just like to hear our main character explain why this dude is the slightest bit more special than her one night stance. Please don't speak Chinese or whatever. Okay, I got it. Yeah, save that for when you need to apologize for accidentally recognizing Taiwan as a country. From behind? You look like a dude! So when Steven tries to talk dirty or talk tough, he says stuff like this. The movie suggests he might be gay or bisexual, but ultimately absolutely nothing happens because of this. Feels like they just wanted to tell gay jokes through him, and that's why he's in the movie. I'm going to visit my dad. I'm offering you this information without you asking about it whatsoever. And it's super weird because we put my dad in a home that is in Nassau County, which is a fairly significant distance from Manhattan. But really, this is just a scene for Dave Attell to get some more screen time and not actually important. And it's why Judd Apatow comedies are always two goddamn plus hours. You got my Met stuff? Having Met stuff. Did you just drive 40 minutes back here to look for your sunglasses? 
Yeah, of course. You think I'm gonna give Sunglass Hut another thirty dollars for these? Indeed, this forty-minute drive for sunglasses is a hilarious reason for LeBron to make his first appearance in the movie. There's also some very funny discourse on watching Downton Abbey later, so you can see why it was worth it. Listen, I'm watching it tonight because I'm not gonna go to practice in the morning, and all the guys are talking about it, and I'm left out. Huh? It's hard for me to believe they watched this and said we should give this guy an entire movie before making Space Jam 2. I like smaller teams, like the not the big leagues. I like the like um, Long Island mediums, the the Acorn Pine. Cones? I haven't heard the of them. Fire Island Penguins. <sighs> I think sports brings people together. You know, it kind of forms a community. Something tells me this man has never watched parents fight at a peewee basketball game. <laughs> no, I love black people. I prefer black people. I'm not sure what the joke they were going for here is, but I'm just gonna slap this stupid exchange with three sins and move on before I spend too much time overthinking it. I'll talk to your... Cheryl. Cheryl? Yeah about um, when we can meet again. Oh, so they didn't actually get anything related to the schedule done during this meeting and a phone call would have worked all along? No, we're not going into the park. Oh man, you dragged poor Daniel Radcliffe and Marissa Tomei into this movie? Did they just tell them they were making a movie about dog walking and then sneak it into the Amy Schumer movie without warning them? That seems awfully mean. What's your technique? Well, I put them on a leash and walk them. Talk a big game. That's because I walk a big dog. He had a chance to make fun of extremely pretentious art films here and wrote nothing that resembles them. We'll make Mama Say Knock You Out starring my fist and your d The management of this theater would like you to turn off your cell phones during this motion picture, but loudly threatening people will be largely condoned if it sounds funny enough. Our ushers will make the determination. Who the f is hot as balls? Chris Pine, obviously. Oh, you weren't asking for you, were you? <laughs> My bad. F you, Tone Loke. You want to take it to the parking lot? Fine. You can't find me, I'll be the closest one on Grinder. Wow, racist and nonsensical. That's not the like. You know what the sad part is? I was going to ask you to marry me. You were going to marry the woman every single one of your friends warned you would use you and break your heart? Bro, you got to do a better job of listening to your bros. Yeah, this guy's got a dream, and it's us making it. So Stephen potentially being gay had nothing to do with this breakup, and now I'm convinced that his only purpose here was to tell a bunch of inappropriate gay jokes and quietly leave the picture when there weren't any more left in the barrel. I'm very high, and I just kind of need this interaction to be over. Suggesting that you need to be high to want this interaction to be over. Oh my god, he's like dying to f*** me. The problem with having Amy Schumer play a character named Amy is that now I'm convinced she would have this thought in real life, and that somehow makes this scene more annoying. God, they look like they're on a speed date. I'm not quite sure that I'm the target audience for this film, and I'm also not quite sure which audience the incestophilia jokes are for, but I do know that this scene right here and now is for the audience watching this video on YouTube, so enjoy! I was the first person on my block to own a television set. That's, that's really not relevant right now, Norman. That's interesting. It's not relevant. Somehow the editor didn't have the same power of persuasion with the director of this movie. Also, if you're going to get Norman I Live to Be 106 Lloyd in your movie, can't you do something with him other than this? I'd even settle for a Dead Poets parody where he tells all the residents of this place to sit down. Sorry if I'm excited more about my grandkid than some step grandkid. <laughs> ah, this man doesn't need an assisted living facility. He needs to be euthanized. He's making Mel Gibson look like a better father in Daddy's Home too, and I didn't even think that was possible. What's your story? Are you like a Division One athlete or something? Yes, yes. What's your story, random person played by Pete Davidson? I really wouldn't do a Hitler march. Have we discovered what we like about Amy yet? Is there a reason why Dr. Connors even wants to do this interview? Amy gets woozy from the exercise and it's decided that she needs to eat. So obviously they dressed up and went to the fanciest restaurant they could find hours later. Um, just so you know, if you want me to keep something out of the article, if you want it to be off the record, you have to tell me before. He does not. Off the record is simply an informal agreement between a journalist and an interviewee. He can request something be left out of the article at any time and she's free to grant or deny him that request at her own professional risk. I'm here by sentencing you to journalism boot camp with Michael Keaton. Can I read some of it? When did you start liking this woman? For real? You have shown nothing but annoyance at her and the other scenes you have together. Can we get the bill, please? We'd like to pay for the food. I feel like this movie too often confuses obnoxious behavior for comedy, and I feel like I need to start drinking if I'm going to keep sinning it. You want to give him your address? Spring in Washington. That's not an address. That's an intersection. An address is a set of numbers followed by one street. So help me find the line of Amy's journalism ethics. There are specific rules for how off the record works, but not having sex with your interviewee. Do I have that right? Yeah, I'm bumping up your Michael Keaton journalism boot camp to this weekend. Pack a toothbrush. Are you comfortable? No, no I'm not. Is it because he asked you to stay, you declined, and then he grabbed you with both arms to prevent an escape? That's why I'm uncomfortable. Actually, can we put this pillow in between us? I can't tell if this is supposed to be funny or sad or a little bit of both. All I know is I don't care one bit about Amy scoring with Aaron or what that means for her life. I know this leads to a realization that she wants to be with somebody, but she hasn't stated a real goal for this movie. I'm sorry, I'm nitpicking, but like you're breathing on me pretty hard right oh. now. Oh, 
fucking insufferable. Hey, have you ever seen any kind of article about a fetish? Characters casually wander in to tell jokes so you'll remember they're in the movie before they quietly leave the picture yet again. Can you handle their load, Amy? <sighs> You know, after seeing her play Gabriel in Romance of Gin, this just feels like Tilda Swinton abuse, and I'm not okay with that. She's a f***ing treasure, and you made her say lines like this. So here's 50 sins for the Tilda abuse. What's she saying? What's she saying? LeBron, don't you have some playoffs to lose somewhere? Contact clues tell us the movie is set in 2015. Amy's phone told us that it was April 22nd, and she banged Aaron that very night. In 2015, around this time, he was with the Cavaliers, playing against the Boston Celtics, and did not have time to be hanging out with a knee doctor in New York. And the next thing you're going to tell me is that this movie isn't a reflection of real life, and this version of LeBron can hang out in New York at all times with a knee doctor, and I'd say there's no way LeBron would be this happy in April not being in the playoffs. He called me on purpose. Hang up. He's obviously, like, sick or something. Jesus Christ, I don't know if this is necessarily a new thing. Overreacting has been a staple of comedy since, I don't know, Metropolis? I frequently cite that movie to look smart, so I hope so. Anyway, overreactions like this are audience manipulating newer piles of phoniness, demanding laughter from an audience that was asleep just a second ago. It's practically a neon sign on the screen saying, laugh, you bastard. I was wondering if you wanted to um, hang out again. Will you say that again, please? This is supposedly a momentous occasion, like she wasn't just in a semi-serious relationship with John Cena a second ago. That, that's pretty cool, man. Aaron was already scheduled to see her again for an interview, and this phone call just established the interview was still going to happen. So I'm now questioning the things that get LeBron James excited. My boy. Got a girlfriend. Like, man, it's been forever. Your boy did not get a girlfriend. He had a one night stand. So I'm now questioning LeBron James's perception of reality. Footage of Amy Schumer watching the dailies accidentally makes it into the movie. Why Billy Joel? Why Uptown Girl? I love that song. That's like probably the worst Billy Joel song. Forgetting the River of Dreams exists. Actually, Aaron, I think you're so great. And, uh, but I'm a writer. From now on, we, we need to just. Keep it professional. Just a scene ago, you were so happy that he called, and it was such a momentous occasion that the movie stopped dead in its tracks to give LeBron more screen time. What f***ing changed? Are you excited about this relationship or not? Yeah, see, I really like you. You can say that, but I have yet to see any evidence for this claim beyond the script mandating the start of your relationship. What hospital is that? Uh, whatever hospital is convenient between Manhattan and Long Island, where you guys get there so fast that his head is still freshly bleeding. I was a doctor in my country. Yeah, I'll let you know if the wound gets uh, invaded by evil spirits. Amy's dad is such a flaming bag of that I'm 100% certain no evil spirit would want to take up residence inside his trash-filled husk of a human body. What if I, like, forget to flush the toilet and there's, like, a tampon in there? Well, seeing as tampons aren't meant to be flushed down the toilet, I'd say you kind of brought that one on yourself. There's a reason most women's bathrooms have little bins in each stall for tampon disposal. I'm doing, like, a crime scene tampon, like, like, oh, the red wedding, Game of Thrones. Oh, you mean it'll look like that guy's from the beginning of the movie? The pole isn't always greased right. Not sure whether to sin you for equating cheerleaders to exotic dancers or for judging the women who use either of these occupations to earn money and pay bills. You know what? How about I send both, just to be safe? No, we've just been dating for like six weeks. The movie casually skips over six weeks of dating with a character we know doesn't like commitment, providing no insight into why this is happening, other than Aaron sewed up my dad's bleeding forehead that one time. I really have to ask you a question. Don't hurt him. That's an imperative sentence, LeBron. You know we're kissing on a rock? You know how many homeless people have taken a dump on that rock? Subway kissing? Ew. Amy misses her opportunity to say, do you know how many homeless people have taken a dump on this train? You are my b LeBron James. LeBron, who for the whole movie has been talking about how tight he is with Dr. Connors, apparently takes this taunt seriously enough to walk towards him in a threatening manner, making a mess for some underpaid janitor to clean up. I have no desire for an oriental woman to touch me above the waist. First time we saw Gordon after the opening scene, he was arguing with Norman Lloyd about how Babe Ruth wasn't very good because he never faced people of color during his entire career. But ever since then, this motherfucker has been racist as sh**. Tim Meadows is in this movie, but somehow doesn't have a bigger role, making this movie way funnier in the process. He wouldn't have been able to save it, but it would have been more tolerable. You two are really cute together. They are not. I now question your judgment skills and things that are cute. Puppies are cute. Bumblebees are cute. People who think Indiana Jones needed more than three movies are cute. This pairing, not cute. Keep her away from those pro athletes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? No, like, it was a joke. I don't get the joke angle. Yeah, this isn't a very good or appropriate joke or anything, but the character of Aaron Connors changes from moment to moment in this film. There are times he clearly has a wacky sense of humor in this movie, from over loudly asking for a check to taunting LeBron after scoring on him. He claims he loves Amy and her jokes, so why is he playing Barry all of a sudden? He's simple, oh, that's not cool, dude, would work, and we wouldn't have to figure out whether Aaron understands jokes or not. The game is skeletons in the closet. Okay. We all have to admit things we yeah. never 
told anyone before. <laughs> Sounds like exactly the type of game you'd play while at a baby shower. Very baby themed. Totally natural. Last week, I let my six-year-old watch Glee. There She's were some um, homosexual undertones, I will say that. While every asshole stand-up comic in this movie gets at least one scene to riff, Nikki Glaser gets cast in the super thankless role as a conservative mom. I let Tim and his brothers <laughs> me on Christmas morning. So Tim... And his brothers? You know, this movie doesn't have enough banjo in the soundtrack to justify writing like this. Dad died. Oh no, and he was so likable too. I had a black boyfriend once. Vanessa Bayer plays an absolute alien in this movie and her origins are never explained. Anyway, what in the everlasting f is wrong with this movie? How does it have an 84% of Rotten Tomatoes? Raise your hand if our dad ever offended you. I know you can't see this because I'm not on screen, but I'm raising my hand. When I asked him to tell me the story of how he proposed to our mom, his response was, who? And I know he was joking. He loved her a lot. Ah, yes, true love. One of the signs of which is rapid and repeat infidelity. You've been running away from this f***ing family forever. Skip. Are you seriously saying that to me today? Skip. I wouldn't f*** that with your d You know what? Let's add another 50 sins for the tilde abuse and move on before I have an aneurysm. Why didn't you tell me this was so fancy? You tried. Then you went into one of your less than funny tirades that have inexplicably bloated this movie to two hours. I'm Tony Romo. Is that fair? <laughs> she doesn't know what sport Tony Romo plays, and she made a wild stab making a guess. Hilarious. To our MVP, and to my good friend, Dr. Aaron Connors. As crazy as it sounds, I almost feel like there's a good movie inside of this one. If you cut out the obnoxious rom-com elements and Amy Schumer who just made a sports medicine drama with Bill Hader, that'd be a movie I'd actually want to see. He does so much to try and save this film, and then the script demands that he sacrifice common sense to stay shackled to this abusive narcissist. It's maddening. And uh, remember, don't eat anything after midnight. Now I'm pretty sure the rule is don't feed your mogwai after midnight. Come on, Aaron, I thought you were a doctor. How do we create conflict now that the movie has completely died? Oh, I know, let's have Amy's horrible boss, Diana, text and call her during an important luncheon where Doctors Without Borders is giving her boyfriend an award. Brilliant. Do you think we need to show that Diana has ever done this before? Nah, f*** it. Diana is so terrible that this inconsistency will be completely overlooked. Manufacture the conflict, damn you. Your parents weren't that happy. I don't think you're as accurate of a judge of parental happiness as you think you are. Remember that steadfast defense of your father? And then it brings us to this conversation, which I feel would be funny if the movie had built a foundation for it. It involves the words going and and on and her, and it would be hilarious in another movie. I wanted to make a sin about the editing of this movie just randomly jumping from their argument to make out, but now all I can think about is how stupid that giant teacup is in the background. What's that for? If it's decorative, why is it on the dining room table? If it's for actual use, why is it in a cabinet somewhere? What do you put in it? Soup? Coffee? It's ridiculous. Hey, can we get a coffee? Asking a nurse to get you coffee. That's not their job, bro. You want one? Jog down to the cafeteria or over to a vending machine. Are you sure you're okay? I'm good. I'm good. We're gonna get this going. A doctor who has been shown to be this professional who just got an award from Doctors Without Borders would f***ing not want to go through with this surgery today, right? Right? I can't say it wouldn't happen, but the character we've been presented would not do this. It's a completely different errand that doesn't get explained away by sleep deprivation. You're nervous. I'm nervous. Amy was acting like a psycho last night. Last night? Have you been conscious for your entire relationship thus far? Nothing she exhibited was new behavior. It does bother me that you smoke and that you drink a lot. And I do care that you've slept with a lot of guys. I'm sure this was pointed out in many reviews, but the train wreck title is for the movie itself, right? So oddly off the rails, pun intended, but I wonder if that was the point? Like it was a grand experiment and being a messy and coherent movie and seeing if the comedy stylings of Amy Schumer could keep it together? I know we're done here. Oh, thank God. I was about to stab myself with the microphone. Wait a minute, there's still a half hour left? You lied to me. Because your article got canceled. My boss said you were too boring. Feels like we could have skipped the last 14 minutes because that's how long ago that happened. Since then, we saw an absolutely Frankenstein conflict that has meandered its way here like a boy running around the neighborhood in a family circus cartoon. It has led to bloat the likes of which bad guy from Dune hasn't even seen. I think I want to do photography. Photography sounds better than breaking into houses in Vermont. Go for it. The photography, not the burglaries in Vermont. I feel like if you bring attention to this coupling on the internet in 2024, as we're doing right now, you might literally break the internet. But we don't flinch here at CinemaSins. This is Ezra Miller and Amy Schumer in a drunken love scene. Let's just watch and see what happens. If it keeps on raining, the net is gone to break. If it keeps on raining, the net is gone to break. When the internet breaks, I have no place to stay. He is 16 years old! Why the f*** did this movie think this joke was okay? Who wrote this? Oh, Amy Schumer wrote it. 
Yeah, that, that actually makes sense. I reread your latest draft of the Dr. Connors piece, and I, I have to confess I spoke too soon. It is very good. Does Diana seem like the type of person who rereads things that she was bored about earlier? I can't have one of my employees having sex with someone under and beating them up, you know, one or the other, but not the combo. What a strange line in the sand you've drawn. I'm honestly baffled by this choice of morals. Ah, well, better to sin first and not ask questions later. I know you're close with Nikki. She got the executive editor position. But why? She looks like an idiot. Did, did Amy forget to write the rest of that line? No, she just leaves? Okay. With nothing better to do, the movie resorts to a sad loneliness montage and not one person screams, Drago! Hey. LeBron James stages an intervention for Aaron because something something his relationship and it makes no sense. They drag Chris Everett, Matthew Broderick, and Marv Albert into this thing to do a skit where Matthew Broderick seems to give heartfelt advice and somehow brings nothing funny to the table. Chris Everett hits on Aaron and Albert does a play-by-play. -play. For Christ's sake, if you're gonna do a ridiculous skit, don't stage it this boringly. Sometimes the right person happens to be sitting right in front of you. I'm now sitting the fact that she's not talking about LeBron in this scene. Everett is still at it, and frankly, it's making me uncomfortable. I don't know. I see the Marv Albert, and all I can think of is that incident in the late 90s when women accused him of biting them in hotel rooms. And I can't help but think he's the worst person in this group to talk about sexual advances being uncomfortable. I thought you said he would look at my hip. Why does every person in this movie seem to think Aaron is the only doctor in the world? You know what your hip looked at? Call your PCP. I'm broken. Just when Brie Larson is going to have a heartfelt talk with her sister about her life and relationships, it's Alistair who swoops in and unintentionally gives her lessons in chemistry. I draw it out first, you know, to plan it so I know what to build and what to put in it instead of just winging it. <laughs> Take that, Amy's life. Here's my bedroom. Here's the baby's room. What's that rectangle? It's the mattress for you and Aaron to stay in once the baby's born. And that tall, dark figure in the bushes. That's the imaginary friend who tells me about the man who killed his entire family in this house. I like him more than anybody. He's my best friend. Okay, when did that happen in the movie? He's your best friend? LeBron is his best friend, dude. You and Aaron haven't had any heartfelt talks or seemingly had anything in common the entire time to be best friends. I see whatever bullshit, nonsense, balderdash, claptrap, hogwash that had Brie Larson going to check on her hubby has been resolved. Phew, I was gonna be stuck in a thesaurus for days if that didn't get settled. And maybe every drunken night, accidental ride on the Staten Island Ferry, an awkward sexual encounter were just practice for this, the main event. So he wrote an article about Aaron Connors that explains how he's changing sports with his knee surgeries and somehow mixed in a personal tale about your drunken sex nights? That article sounds fucking terrible. Why did Vanity Fair put that in the magazine unedited? Since the beginning of training camp, Nick fans have wondered, when do they get back their number one? Well, if it's 2015, then never, because Amari Stoudemire was waived by the Knicks in February of that year. And since we've already established that LeBron is back in Cleveland, and Amy and Aaron started dating in late April, and quite a bit of time has passed, then this has to be the 2015-2016 season when he was playing with the Miami Heat. I understand that the movie had no way of knowing this, since it was shot in 2014, but I'm unfairly going to take it to task anyway. Anyone who has lived in New York for as long as Amy has would know that yelling taxi behind a barrier on a sidewalk 50 feet away from the road is not likely to end in success. And it is a standing ovation. I feel like this movie ran out of fuel so they just put a basketball game in the last 10 minutes. And that just reminds me, I could have been watching basketball instead of train wreck. Look, I'm not much of a taxi guy and prefer the subway when I travel around New York City, but it's really weird that Amy has this much trouble finding a taxi or calling an Uber to now make a run for a train. Why are we stopped? Woman, have you ever rode on a subway before? Oh, what, I got metro cards in my f***ing purse now? What the f*** does that even mean? Does a stack of metro cards somehow give you more knowledge about how the trains work? You guys look great tonight. Wait, we just heard it was the first quarter and we saw Amy running into the building. Now the game is over? What kind of goddamn time warp did we just go through? What the f*** are these two creepers doing in the stands after the game? You expect me to believe Amy went to each of these cheerleaders, asked them to train her and stay late after a game so she could win back a guy she doesn't deserve? And they agreed? I'm sorry, I had less trouble believing Arya killed the Night King. Oh my, this is still going. It feels like a skit that didn't quite make SNL, so it got tacked on at the end of this movie. We are all Staten Islanders tonight. Can I leave? I wanna go! What's your story? Are you like a Division One athlete or something? Well, I just look like I f You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I look like I f I f we like to pay for the food? Ah, can we get the bill? Uh, just one stop. You wanna give him your address? 
Ring in Washington. You don't need to put your P in a V right now. Hey, have you ever seen any kind of article about a fetish where guys like to masturbate to hockey fights? You got jammed by your own team. Self jam. My boy got intimate. Yeah. Sexual intercourse. Woo. Relations. Amy's great too, by the way. Like, I just love her. Keep her away from those pro athletes, you know? She is the mother of my unborn child. Sorry. You're my stepbrother, we're not even blood. I have no qualms with sticking you. I will equalize you. So I just, you know, like hooked my finger like this and then just kind of bared down and just got it out of there. I let Tim and his brothers <laughs> me on Christmas morning. That beats my story. Have you just been watching TV and smoking all day? You know, you smoke too much of that shit. That shit's gonna rob you of your ambition. I can't have one of my employees having sex with someone under and beating them up. Would you wear a shoe on your head? Of course you wouldn't wear a shoe on your head. A shoe doesn't belong on your head. The baby's room is pink. It's a girl? It's a girl. Buy some pink sh